Why do the guidelines make the statement that there is limited research on the impact of testosterone? I've just referenced that World Rugby have only recently come up with their own guideline that references 49 scientific reports. Our guideline was released in June of 2019 and at that point when the guidelines were released, uh, that was the conclusion we found from our research. What discussions have the Australian Human Rights Commission and Sport Australia had then about redrafting the guidelines to incorporate the scientific and medical evidence produced by World Rugby as part of its research into trans inclusion? So the guidelines were only released uh, last year. Uh, as you know, this year's uh, sporting um, season has been severely disrupted. Um, and so it would not be normal practice that we would be reviewing them uh, so early in the piece. Not uh, in a did... situation where you have previously said in the guidelines that there is limited research regarding the impact of testosterone on sporting individuals, and we now have a situation where there is a vast body of research developed by World Rugby. Senator Chandler, I remind you that this is um, guidance on how the Sex Discrimination Act works. It's not guidance on medical opinion, medical advice, medical research. That is becoming very apparent to me throughout my questions to you. And it is quite concerning to me to hear this in a situation where these guidelines were originally published um, with the intention of providing guidance to sporting organisations around transgender inclusion at the same time that many people are raising valid concerns about the safety and fairness impact on women's sport, as you and I have previously discussed here many times before.